everybody, I'm Alex, and welcome to Storytime. I have so many great stories for you today, and this time, it's all about friends. Now, I'm here, like usual, with my buddy Buster, who's here to keep me company. And, not like usual, my buddy Buster is here with a couple of his friends, who are here to keep him company, which is so nice. Before we get into everything, though, I want to let you know a couple of things. For starters, if you like story times, we have so many great story times on AADL TV, so check them out. Also, if you're looking for something to do, we have all kinds of great kids craft projects, so check those out as well. Also, if you like kids programming, we have the Saturday show, which is always on a theme and always excellent. Okay, I think we've covered our bases, and now it's time to do a hello song, because you can't have a good story time without a good hello song. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Here goes nothing. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. I'd like to say hello. So there are so many different languages in the world, and so many different ways to say hello. For example, in Irish Gaelic, you would say Gia Huich, which doesn't mean hello exactly, but it's close enough. Let's try that one next. Gia Huich, friends. Gia Huich, friends. Gia Huich, friends. I'd like to say Gia Huich. Else could we say hello today? You know, in Germany you would say Guten Tag. Let's try that one too. Guten Tag, friends. Guten Tag, friends. Guten Tag, friends. I like to say Guten Tag. How else could we say hello? You know, in Hawaiian. Hello is Aloha. Let's try that one too. Aloha, friends. Aloha, friends. Aloha, friends. I'd like to say Aloha. Okay, back to hello. Hello. Next up, we're going to do a finger exercise and a rhyme. I brought my fingers with me today. How about you? Oh, you did. That's good. Okay, I'm going to get my index fingers going like this because we're going to do two little blackbirds, like usual. Okay, a one, two, three. Two little blackbirds sitting on a tree, one named Stan and the other named Lee. Fly away, Stan. Fly away, Lee. Come back, Stan. Come back, Lee. Okay, let's do a different version this time. Two little blackbirds sitting on a car. One was near, and the other was far. Fly away, near. Fly away, far. Come back, near. Come back, far. Okay, one more time. Two little blackbirds sitting on the ice. One was mean, and the other was nice. Fly away, mean. Fly away, nice. Come back, mean. Come back, nice. This next story is called The Surprise, and it's a frog and toad story. Now, once upon a time, there were two very good friends who lived very close to each other in two very similar adorable little houses. Now, it was late fall and all the trees had lost all of their leaves and there were leaves everywhere, including covering both of their yards. Well, one morning, 
Frog looked out his window, and he saw all those leaves in his yard, and he said, oh, I should probably take care of that. But then he saw all the leaves at his very good friend Toad's house, and he said, I could rake up my leaves, but I think I'm going to do something even better. I am going to go over, and I am going to rake up my friend's leaves, and I'm going to do it secretly so that it is a surprise, which is exactly what he did. He grabbed his best rake, and so that his friend wouldn't see him coming, he snuck out through the woods and around the long way to his friend Toad's house. Now, wouldn't you know that at exactly the same time, Toad looked out his window and he saw all the leaves covering everything and he saw all the leaves right in front of his friend Frog's house. And he said to himself, Self, I should probably take care of the leaves in my own yard. But I think I am going to go over to my friend Frog's house first and clean up those leaves because he's such a good friend and I would like him to have a nice surprise. So that is exactly what he did. So And so that his friend wouldn't see him coming, he went the long way through the tall grass in the field on his way to the, his friend Frog's house. Well, by that time, Frog had made it to Toad's house and he noticed that Toad wasn't home and he thought to himself, oh, all the better. I can go ahead and I can rake up these leaves and Toad will have a genuine surprise when he sees what's all, that it's all done. So he worked and 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 he worked until all the leaves were in a nice, big, beautiful pile next to Toad's house. And he thought to himself, self, I am such a good friend and I am so happy that Toad is my friend and I think Toad is going to be so happy that I did such a nice thing for him. And he set off for home. He turned his back and wouldn't you know, the second he was no longer looking at that yard, a giant wind blew through and scattered all the leaves back exactly where they had been before, covering everything. Well, simultaneously, Toad was at Frog's house doing exactly the same thing. He saw all those leaves, he got some elbow grease going, and he went to work. He raked, and 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 eventually all of the leaves were in a nice, big, beautiful pile out in front of Frog's house. Well, he was feeling very, very proud of himself. He said, I am so happy to have a good friend like Toad. And I think Toad, I, uh, like a good friend like Frog. And I think Frog is going to be so happy to have me as a friend because I did him such a nice favor. So, he set off for home, his work being done. But wouldn't you know, the second he turned his back on that pile of leaves, a giant wind blew through and scattered them back pretty much exactly where they had been before. Well, when Frog got home, he saw those leaves out in his yard and he said, oh, well, that needs taken care of, but I am too tired. I spent all of my energy cleaning out my friend Toad's house and that was definitely worth the while. So he went in and he got himself into bed. And at about exactly the same time, Toad showed up at his house he saw those leaves everywhere, but he thought to himself, you know, I should have raked my own leaves, but it's okay. I can always do it tomorrow, and I can rest easy knowing that my friend Frog won't have to do it because I raked up his leaves for him. So he went inside and he got himself into bed. And that night, Frog and Toad were each so happy with themselves and so happy that they were such good friends to each other. And as they turned out their lights and went to bed, they thought of their surprises for each other and smiled and went to sleep. The end. All right, you guys, we should do another song. And this time, what should we do? What should we do? I know, let's do Zoom 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 because it's so fun. All right, one, two, three. Zoom Zoom Zoom, we're going to the moon. Zoom Zoom Zoom, we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. In five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's do it again.
Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. In five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! Oh my goodness! Okay, one last time. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. In five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! Oh my goodness. Okay, now it's time for another story. All right, kids, our next story is about two friends and an adventure that they have. It's called Sam and Dave Dig a Hole. On Monday, Sam and Dave dug a hole. When should we stop digging? asked Sam. We are on a mission, said Dave. We won't stop digging until we find something spectacular. The hole got so deep that their heads were underground, but they still had not found anything spectacular. We need to keep digging, said Dave. So they kept digging. They took a break. Dave drank chocolate milk out of a canteen. Sam ate animal cookies he had wrapped in his grandfather's kerchief. Maybe, said Dave, the problem is that we are digging straight down. Yes, said Sam, that could be the problem. I think we should dig in another direction, said Dave. Yes, said Sam, that is a good idea. I have a new idea, said Dave. Let's split up. Really? said Sam. Just for a little while, said Dave. It will help our chances. So Dave went one way, and Sam went another. But they did not find anything spectacular. Maybe we should go back to digging straight down, said Dave. Yes, said Sam, that is a good idea. Sam and Dave ran out of chocolate milk, but they kept digging. They shared the last animal cookie, but they kept digging. After a while, Sam sat down. Dave, he said, I am tired. I cannot dig anymore. I am tired too, said Dave. We should take a rest. Sam and Dave fell asleep. Oh, but their dog's still digging. But wait, what's happening? Then Sam and Dave were falling. Sam and Dave fell down, down, down. Until they landed in the soft dirt. Well, said Sam. Well, said Dave, that was pretty spectacular. Oh, <laughs> their poor dog fell on his head. But he's okay though. And they went inside for chocolate milk and animal cookies. The end. All right, it's time for song, and this time we're gonna do A Hunting We Will Go. One, two, three. 
A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. Hi ho the derby o, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. We'll catch a fox and put it in a box and then we'll let it go. A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. Hi ho the derby o, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. We'll catch a bunny and feed it honey and then we'll let it go. A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. Hi ho the dairy o, a hunting we will go. A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. We'll catch a squirrel and dance a twirl and then we'll let it go. A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. Hi ho the dairy o, a hunting we will go. A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. We'll catch a bear and comb its hair and then we'll let it go. A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. Hi ho the dairy o, a hunting we will go. A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. We'll catch a, a skunk and put it in a trunk and then we'll let it go. A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. Hi ho the dairy o, a hunting we will go. A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. We'll catch a cat and put it in a hat and then we'll let it go. Our next story is called Little Beaver and the Echo. Once upon a time, a little beaver lived on the edge of a pond in a steep mountain valley with mountains all around. Now, little beaver had everything a beaver could possibly want. There was plenty of good food to eat and the sun was warm and there were always plenty of tall trees to chew on. But Little Beaver, he had no brothers and sisters, and he had no friends. Now this made Little Beaver very sad, and one day he was sitting on the edge of the pond and he started to cry. And he cried out, Oh, woe is me! And wouldn't you know, after about a second, this tiny little voice came from the other side of the pond, and it called back, Oh, woe is me! Now, you and I both know that what Little Beaver heard is called an echo. But Little Beaver, he did not know this, and he was very surprised indeed. So he called back, and he said, hello. And sure enough, after about a second, the little voice called back, and it said, hello. Little Beaver said, why were you crying? And after about a second, the little voice said, why are you crying? Now, Little Beaver, he thought about this for a second. And then he said, I am so sad. I am here all by myself and I need a friend. And after about a second, the little voice called back, I am so sad and I need a friend. So this made Little Beaver very excited and he decided he was going to set off. He was going to find the person whose voice that was from the other side of the pond and they were going to be friends. So he plopped into the pond and he started to slowly swim around the edge on his way to the other side. After a little while, Little Beaver came across a silly duck who was swimming in circles all by herself. Little Beaver asked the duck, was it you that was calling out? I am looking for somebody who needs a friend. The duck, she thought about it for a second and she said, well, no, it wasn't me that was calling out, although I could use a friend. So Little Beaver said, why don't you come along with me and together we can find the voice that was coming from the other side, which is what they did. So they swam and they swam around the edge until they came across a playful otter who was swimming all by himself. The little beaver, he asked the otter, was it you that was calling from the other side of the pond? We are looking for somebody who needs a friend. The otter said, well, no. It wasn't me that was calling out, although I'm here all by myself and I could use a friend. So Little Beaver said, why don't you come along with the two of us and together we can find the voice from the other side, which is what they did. So they swam and they swam. And after a little while, they came across an old tortoise who was sunning himself on a big rock at the edge of the pond. Little Beaver asked the tortoise, was it you that was calling out? 
we are looking for somebody who needs a friend. Now the tortoise said, no, it wasn't me that was calling, but I really could use a friend. So the little beaver said, why don't you come along with the three of us and all together we can find the voice from the other side of the pond. Well, after a little while, they came across a wise old beaver who was sitting at the edge of the pond. The little beaver told the old beaver how they had made their way across the pond looking for the voice on the other side. They were trying to figure out who it was who was crying. It wasn't the duck, the little beaver said, and it wasn't the otter, and it wasn't the tortoise either. Who could it be? Now, the wise old beaver, he thought for a while, and he thought and he thought, and then he said, I know who that was. You heard the echo. Where does the echo live? asked the little beaver. On the other side of the pond, said the old beaver. No matter where you are, the echo is always on the other side of the pond from you. Why is he crying? asked the little beaver. When you are sad, the echo is sad, said the wise old beaver. And when you are happy, the echo is happy too. But how can I find him? asked the little beaver. And how can I be his friend? He doesn't have any friends, and neither do I. Except for me, said the duck. And me, said the otter. And me, said the tortoise. The little beaver looked surprised. Yes, he said. I have lots of friends now. And he was so happy that he said it out again, and this time very loudly. I have lots of friends now. And from across the pond, a voice answered him. I have lots of friends now. You see, said the wise old beaver, when you're happy, the echo is happy too. When you have friends, he also has friends. Hooray, shouted the little beaver, and the duck and the otter and the turtle all together. And the echo shouted back from them across the pond, hooray. And all of them lived happily ever after together. The end. All right, you kids, it's time to do a song. And this time, I think we should do the pirate song because it's the best. Okay, one, two, three. When I was one, I sucked my thumb on the day I went to sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, oh, you'll go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was two, I tied my shoe on the day I went to sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you'll go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was three, I tapped my knee on the day I went to sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you'll go this way, that way. Way forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was four, I shut the door on the day I went to sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you'll go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was five, I danced and jived on the day I went to sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you'll go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. Our next story is called Croc and Bird. This is a story about a little crocodile and a little baby bird who are maybe brothers, but definitely friends. Let's take a look. Side by side, on the sand, sat two eggs. A bird and a crocodile. Hello, brother, said bird. I'm hungry, said crocodile. Open your mouth as wide as you can and food will come, said bird. So they waited and waited but food did not come. Perhaps I should go and look for some, said Crocodile. 
I wonder what food looks like. I don't know what we like, so I've brought a selection, he said when he came back. Could you chew it for me? asked Bird. When they had finished, they sat together on the sand, looking out at the world. I'm cold, said Crocodile. Me too, said Bird. Then the sun rose. Look. It's beautiful, said Crocodile. I think we should sing to it, said Bird. Singing makes me sleepy, said Crocodile. And then he fell asleep. When Crocodile woke up, Bird was sitting on something. Ooh, said Crocodile. What is it? It's our home, said Bird. Days went by. Crocodile and bird grew big together. They practiced flying, and they practiced lying like logs in the water. They practiced climbing, and they practiced dancing. When the weather was fine, they basked on hot rocks. When it was bad, they fluffed up to keep warm. I'm glad you're my brother, said Crocodile. Then, one day, when they were out hunting, the river carried them far away. To a lake full of crocodiles, by a forest full of birds. They looked at them, and then they looked at each other. Oh, said Bird. How silly we've been. We're not brothers at all, said Crocodile. I suppose we have to say goodbye, said Bird. Goodbye, said Crocodile. Crocodile swam off to be with the crocodiles. Bird flew off to be with the birds. Next morning, Crocodile greeted the sun with a song. Be quiet, said the crocodiles. At lunch, Bird caught a buffalo. <laughs> That's disgusting, said the birds. In the evening, Crocodile said, I've built us a nest. But no one cared. When it got dark, Bird flew away by himself. Come back, called the other birds. We don't fly at night. Bird found Crocodile perched in a tree. I couldn't sleep, said Bird. Me neither, said Crocodile. I missed you, said Bird. Me too, said Crocodile. Brother, said Bird. Yes, said Crocodile. Good night. The end. All right, it's almost that time, you guys. It is almost time to say goodbye. But before we go, we have time for one last song. And like usual, we're going to sing Knees Up Mother Brown. And like usual, I have the spectacular, the oracular, the downright vernacular Mother Brown to help us sing. Or at very least, she can dance while we sing. Isn't that right, Ma Brown? Yeah, that's right. Okay, let's get to it. One, two, three. Oh, there was a girl from Paris, France, who didn't know how to dance. The only thing that she could do was knees up Mother Brown. Oh, knees up Mother Brown. Knees up Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up, never let the breeze up. Knees up Mother Brown. Oh, we had some stories about friends today, and we'll get to do it again. Hip, hip, hooray. The only thing that we can do is knees up Mother Brown. Oh, knees up Mother Brown. Knees up Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up, never let the breeze up. Knees up Mother Brown. Oh, there was a teeny tiny man, or in this case, a lady, who liked to do handstands. 
You ready, Ma Brown? Okay, sounds like you're ready. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we didn't even make it to five this time. That is just downright shameful. Oh well, there's always next time. The only thing that he could do was knees up Mother Brown. Oh, knees up Mother Brown. Knees up Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up, never let the breeze up. Knees up Mother Brown. Oh, there was a girl from Paris, France, who didn't know how to dance. The only thing that she could do was knees up Mother Brown. Oh, knees up Mother Brown. Knees up Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up, never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. All right, we'll see you next time.